My name is Jacqueline Smith. I'm Division Chair of Nursing at Bishop State Community College. Students who earn an associate degree in nursing can find jobs in a variety of settings. These may include hospital, home health, school nursing. They can also work in physician's office and clinics. Some of the type of patients that we take care of include patients who have broken bones, uh, patients who may have had, had surgery, patients who may have problems, medical problems such as high blood pressure, diabetics, uh, patients who may have wound and need wound care. Also, we see patients in the emergency rooms. They may have been involved in car accidents or some sort of trauma. Many of our graduates who have obtained an associate degree, uh, once they have graduated and passed their licensure exam, they may elect to continue to work and some of them will return to school to obtain other degrees. In the meantime, the associate degree does allow them to work full time with benefits. In a typical nursing program, you will need to take courses such as anatomy and physiology, microbiology. You will also need to take uh, psychology, English, speech, and a humanitative elective such as music, art, or ethics. These courses will establish a foundation that you will build upon. Once you're admitted into the nursing program, you will then take nursing courses. We usually start with fundamentals. That's where we teach you basic skills, such as hand washings, uh, how to obtain height and weight, how to do a physical assessment on a patient, uh, also how to gather data that's information about the patient, such as their age, uh, any allergies that may, they may have, any other medical conditions. That course also is a course that you will need throughout your nursing education because once you have established the basic skill, we then began to introduce advanced skills. That would include things such as starting the intravenous lines on patients. Most, most people call those IV lines. You also learn how to put in tubes such as Foley catheters, which often are used to drain the patient's bladder. Uh, also along that same line, you may learn how to put in nasogastric tube, which goes down the patient's throat into the abdomen. We also encourage students to get a foundation with pharmacology and doses calculation. We have to make sure that you are proficient in calculating the medication dosages on any patients, as well as calculating the proper amount of intravenous fluid that the patient may receive as well. Then towards the end of a curriculum, you may end up in an advanced setting, such as in the critical care area, where you will be taught other skills, such as how to care for a patient with a tracheostomy. Tracheostomy is an airway that's usually put in the patient's neck uh, the patient has to periodically be suctioned. Sometimes they are connected to a machine. Oftentimes the machine is called a ventilator. You may have heard of it also being called life support. It's also at this time that you may be faced with issues that patients and families also are faced with, such as issues of death and dying, whether or not we're going to resuscitate the patient, whether or not the patient wishes to be resuscitated. So all of this is just building, like I said, upon a basic foundation, and we take you from what we call a novice to an expert. Part of your nursing education will be performed in a clinical setting where you will be able to take care of patients. You put your hands on patients. You assist patients with walking. You assist patients with eating. You assist patients with bathing. Uh, just whatever the patient needs, that's what you would do. You would obtain the vital signs on the patients. Uh, and we do this throughout the whole curriculum. We do move from areas such as long-term care to eventually you will go to hospitals and maybe even spend some time in the critical care unit or in the emergency department. You can also spend time in surgery. Towards the end of any nursing curriculum, you have time that you spend one-on-one -on -one with a nurse that already has license. We call that a preceptorship. Those hours vary, but they range anywhere from about uh, 100 hours 
up to 250 hours where you spend that time watching that nurse, shadowing that nurse, and eventually the goal is to get you to assume the responsibility of taking care of a team of patients. The team of patients can consist of anywhere from two to eight patients, and if you're in a long-term care facility, that number may even range anywhere from 10 to 12 patients. At the conclusion of the nursing education program, you will need to pass your licensure examination to obtain licensure to practice in whatever state you reside in. The exam is very challenging, but we have study tools to help you prepare, and also if you uh, prefer, you can also sit for what we call a liar review. That review would consist of information that you have been taught in nursing school. They just sort of sit you down over a two to three day period and go over everything and sort of provide you with tips on how to be successful. My advice to anyone who may be interested in pursuing a career in nursing would be ask yourself, is this really what you want to do for the rest of your life? Because if it is, there are many opportunities out here for you. I would suggest that while you're in high school to take courses uh, such as chemistry, such as biology, uh, get your basic math skills down. Once you get to college also, uh, stay focused. Uh, there are many opportunities out here for you. You can look around to see what healthcare fit settings have an opportunity for you to volunteer. I think it would be a great idea that if you look into becoming a certified nurse's assistant, CNA programs are available. This way it gives you an opportunity to enter into the world of healthcare. You will also get your opportunity to put your hands on patients to see what's being done to them and it will, hopefully it will help you to decide if this is a career path that you want to choose. Uh, it's not always the ple most pleasant things to do as a nurse. However, I've looked at it like this. Whatever my patient need for me to do that I know how to do, then I'm willing to do that. That may include things such as coming into contact with body secretions such as stool, such as urine, such as blood, such as vomitants. Yes, I don't look at it as a bad thing because if the patients could help themselves, then they wouldn't need me. So I look at it as an opportunity to help patients, to put my hands on them. And oftentimes you can also do other things. Patients are great historians. Some of them have lived longer than you have, so they'll tell you things about history, how things used to be. So it's never been a boring moment for me in nursing. That's the other thing I would advise you to do. Keep your ears open. Keep your eyes open and be determined that you're going to be successful at your goal. Because like I often say, there are many ways to reach your goal. You just have to be determined that regardless of what happened, and life will happen because it happens to all of us. But keep your eyes on the prize and stay focused. And you one day will wear that title of registered nurse or a licensed practical nurse.